my name's Karen for Wildlife Rehabilitation Center, and with me today is Callan. Now, to talk about uh, migrating birds and how we can help the migrating birds. But before we talk about the migrators, we'll talk about Callan a little bit. Callan is an American kestrel. They are the smallest falcon in North America, and they are the second smallest falcon in the world. He is fully grown. And Callan is actually 13 when he was learning, starting to learn to fly out of the nest as a fledgling. Um, he was found by a group of children. These children decided to keep him as a pet. Now, as I'm sure you can guess, um, that's not a good idea. It's not the best thing for Callan. Um, and the boys, the group of children, were playing with Callan and they were playing with him with their dog, which obviously when you're a little bird this big, it's not a good idea. Luckily for Callan, a kind man noticed that something was off in that situation, that kids shouldn't be playing with a wild bird, especially not with a dog. He managed to barter with the kids and got Callan um, given to him. He then surrendered Callan to the appropriate authorities, and we ended up get, getting Callan as an education bird. Now, because Callan was taken as a young bird, he never learned essential skills such as learning how to hunt, learning to like other kestrels. He doesn't really like other birds because he doesn't recognize that he is a bird. So he can't go in the wild. He wouldn't know how to feed for himself. Now, as I said, Callan is 13 years old. American kestrels in the wild typically live to about seven years. However, in captivity, they can live up to 17. So Callan is starting to be a little old man. On the subject of him being a little man, he is a boy, and there's two ways to know this. First, with raptors or birds of prey, like falcons, owls, eagles, um, birds that eat other animals, you can usually tell by their weight. A boy is always smaller than a female, so by his weight, we know he's a boy. The second is a lot easier. He is a boy because of his coloring. Now, this isn't always true with all birds of prey, but with American kestrels, the boys have a difference in coloring. You might notice that his wings are a steely blue color. That lets you know he's a boy. If he was a female, those wings would be the same rusty brown as is his back. You might also notice he has a few um, black stripes around his eyes. Those are called mallard stripes. Those aid hunting. Those black lines absorb UV light and allow him to not get the sun glare um, blinding him from finding food. You'll see uh, football players and also cheetahs have this. Now, Callan is with me today to talk about migrating bird. Callan as an American cat typically be a migratory species. In the fall, they migrate to the southern United States and right now they're coming all the way back to Manitoba for to nest and have their babies. And if you look outside you might even be lucky to see one right now you'll often see them on hydro poles and you might notice that their tails are always flicking up and down that's one of the characteristics of american kestrels now as a migratory species they often face a lot of threats one of the biggest threats to migratory species are windows now there are two types of window strikes or collisions there are the daytime ones and the nighttime during the daytime, if you go outside and you look at your windows, you might notice you can see a reflection of the trees and the and a tree. A good way of doing that is removing that reflection. So you can use um, a bar of soap with a bit of water and paint your windows. You can use tempera paints. You can also put little decals on your windows. If you're putting decals or anything on your windows, you want to make sure that there's about four inches um, between each um, decal or object on the vertical and about every two inches horizontally. You can't just put a few and that, that won't be good enough. You have to put it every four inches vertically and every two inches horizontally so that the birds know that they can't go there. Um, other things you can do is you can hang up strings in front of your windows. You can also put bird feeders close to the windows so within a meter or feeders very far off from the windows. You can also put a bird bath. Um, you could put um, a hanging sock, a ton of things to make it so that that window is really obvious to the birds. If you are putting up bird feeders though or a um, bird bath, make sure that you're keeping up with the maintenance of it. So you want to be washing your bird feeders every week 
and you want to if you notice that any birds are having um, any illnesses so they usually they get conjunctivitis which is an eye infection if you notice that take down the bird feeders uh, make sure you completely disinfect it um, until um, and keep doing that on a very regular basis to try to eliminate that from your feeders if you have a bird bath make sure that you're changing the water especially if it's really hot outside and you want to be changing that water frequently also to try to reduce the amount of mosquitoes in your yard um, now the second types of window strikes are the nighttime collisions. Those usually occur because of lights um, inside of your house. So the birds will see the inside and they'll think fly in there. There's an open space. And then they end up hitting the window. So turning off your lights at night is a great thing too. Also if you have lights um, shining outside, that can also confuse birds. Um, they tend to kind of be hypnotized by it and they end up flying around in circles and wasting time and energy instead of going and finding food. So those are a couple of things you can help. Another few things you can help is by making your yard bird. So by planting natural native plants that the birds can come and feed off of. So a lot of grasses and things like that they can come onto. Um, not using pesticides or insecticides that will really help the um, insectivore birds. So like your chimney swifts or um, swallows and things. Are there any questions so far? You've answered them. Um, so we don't have any yet, but you could also talk about what to do if the hits the window. Oh, good point. Now, if you find a bird that's hit the window, the first thing you want to do is look at it. Um, if you notice that it's holding its wings a little funny, there's a bit of blood coming from the beak, you want to put that bird in a cardboard box, make sure it's secure in there, we have a few air holes so you can breathe, and give us a call. Um, currently, we have our drop off at Pemina Vet that is open and we can help that bird. If at first visual observation you don't notice anything wrong with the bird, it just looks like it's a little bit stunned or in shock, the best thing to do is then put it in a cardboard box. You want to put it somewhere where it's safe and it's very quiet and dark. Leave it there for two hours. After those two hours have gone, try opening the box outdoors and see if that bird can fly off. If that bird doesn't fly off after two hours, then give us a call and that bird needs to come in for further treatment. If you can't put that bird in a cardboard box, um, it will typically take up to five hours to recover from a window strike versus the two hours if it's in the cardboard box. The reason for that is that when you put them in a cardboard box that's a dark and safe area, that bird can relax and knows it's safe and it gives it a lot of, it, it, it improves the chances of it recovering. If it's outside where it knows there's predators and things like that, it takes a lot longer for that bird to recover because they have to be vigilant of predators that might come and eat them while they're trying to recover from the shock of hitting the window. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Um, now another thing you might want to make your yard bird friendly um, is that if you, right now you have um, bird boxes out for the nesting birds that are coming, make sure to be cleaning them out right now. Um, you want to remove all the old nest material and give it a thorough wash, um, disinfect them, because you want to be reducing all of the um, parasites that might be transferred over to the, this year's um, nesting birds. Um, I will be putting a few links in the description of this video after this has aired uh, with a few good links on things to do to reduce window collisions. Um, another thing you can do if you do find a bird that unfortunately you can't help anymore, it has passed, you can report it to, um, I believe it's, the acronym is FLAP. They take in those numbers and those statistics and use it to um, use that information to improve data on window collisions and figuring out ways to improve um, how we're building our buildings and windows and things like that. What about materials that you could potentially leave out for nesting? If you want to um, leave out materials for nesting birds, you want to use natural materials. So you don't want to be using any um, strings or yarns or things like that that are synthetic. You can, and you don't want to be really using string because it can get lined up again, um, being tied around the bird's legs. Instead, what I recommend is making your yard more bird friendly. Look for making sure that you have mosses that are naturally occurring in your yard, um, sticks, muds, spider webs. Um, you can also plant certain plants like milkweed that 
stuff that's on the seeds, birds will use that to their nests. Um, or cattails will even use that. Also, um, you can, if you have pet hair, you can leave that outside. Just make sure that that pet hair has not been treated with any um, insecticides or pesticides like um, tick products or anything like that, or flea products, because that could harm the birds. You don't want to be leaving human hair. Human hair is a little fine and can wind up being stuck around the bird's legs and damaging them. So again, I would recommend mostly uh, focusing on making your yard more of a, a better habitat for the, um, the bird and they'll naturally find the materials um, and those materials will decompose and things like that. Well, if you provide synthetic things like um, yarns and strings, those might stay in the environment for a long time, which is not really what we want. We have a question. Yeah. How many babies um, does kestrels have in an average year? And do they only have one brood or do they have multiple per season? Oh, that's a really good question. So in the northern populations, like in Manitoba, they have one brood per season. I believe in warmer areas like the southern United States, they can have multiple. Um, typically, they can have, I believe, between three to seven. Um, depending on how much food they can have, how experienced the parents are. Um, one fun thing about kestrels is that typically the males come first um, in terms of migration and they'll establish a territory and find nesting areas and then once a female comes back and they manage to attract her, the male will show her all these nesting spots and she'll end up making the final decision. Where do they nest? They are a cavity nester which means they will use nest boxes or old um, woodpecker cavities and things like that. Now they are one of the species, ooh, nice little shake, um, that they won't add anything to the nest. So if they find a cavity or a nest box, they'll just use it as is. Now you might be thinking, okay, well then you should just leave the old nest that's in there. No, what you want to do instead is provide new fresh material um, to attract them instead of leaving old stuff in there. Because again, there might be some parasites that can be transferred over. They will use nest boxes, as I said, um, and you can, I'll put a link in the description where you can find a pattern for that. What is their typical diet? Their typical diet is um, a lot of insects, also small rodents like mice and voles. They will sometimes go after um, smaller birds like sparrows, but they're actually not much of which is kind of, um, it can be a bit confusing because sometimes they're mistakenly called sparrow hawks. They're not actually a hawk, neither do they hunt sparrows that often. Um, they're often called sparrow hawks because in England there's a similar um, bird of there that is a sparrow hunter, and that's why it's called a sparrow hawk, but it's not actually. Do they mate for life? They do not mate for life. They will change mates every year. Are they f people friendly? Are they okay around rural yards? Um, so they are, um, I wouldn't typically say a, a wild bird is people friendly, but you will find them in rural areas. Um, I often see them, um, if you're looking for a kestrel, look at the power lines. You'll often see a smaller bird like him and then you'll notice the tail that are flicking back and forth. Um, that's how you probably will find out that it's a kestrel. Um, they also have a very distinctive um, sound very loud and very high pitch. Um, yeah, so you will find them in rural areas. You also find them in semi-urban areas, um, usually the outskirts of the city. We don't typically here in Manitoba, we don't really find them much in the city. You'll usually find um, um, one of their cousins called the Mer in the city. Any other questions? No. no? Now, I talked about the tail flicking that's a characteristic of American kestrels, we don't really know why they do it. It could be used for balance, but it's also thought that it's used for communication with other birds. Um, what they're communicating, I don't know. I don't speak American kestrel, but that's what it's thought that they're doing is they're communica communicating with other birds. What can they be confused with other birds in the city? In the city, they're often confused with merlins, um, which is a slightly bigger um, falcon. Merlins are typically a little bit bigger and they sound a little bit different. Um, they also are a bit different in color. Thank you <laughs> for that. Um, I would say that's probably the main bird that it's confused with. It's 
also sometimes confused with um, morning dove just because morning doves can also be found on power lines and they're a similar size. What can I do to attract them to my yard? If you want to attract them to your yard, I'd recommend a nest box. Um, again, I will put a link in the description. Um, and just making sure that you have a bird friendly yard, making sure there's insects in your yard. Um, probably insects is probably the best thing I could say to recommend. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to attract mice in your yard. <laughs> <laughs> today is go and look in your yard with your kids and we'll put a scavenger hunt list in the description and try to find some of the objects that birds were used to make their own nests um, so we'll probably put mosses um, sticks mud um, moss things like that so um, we'll put that in the description shortly and have fun looking for objects